everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you're enjoying this beautiful, long Labor Day weekend and soaking up the last few weeks of summer. Mm. We're about to turn the corner. Here in Houston, we'll turn the corner in about um, eight weeks. Yeah, and it'll <laughs> go from 90 to 89. <laughs> Okay, we're going to make this short and sweet today because Terry's finishing up Parker Girls number two this weekend. Mm -hmm. So let's get on it. Deadline. First, thank you to everyone who helped Terry find another total roll for me that went missing from the studio. I like to keep a couple of fun things on my desk and it's now back where it belongs. Thank you all so much. Should we show this total roll on camera? We can. Hang on a second. Here he is. Isn't that neat? And uh, it's a hacky sack, you know, which is just so cool. Beanbag. Beanbag hacky sack. And um, yeah, very cool. And the reason why we had a hard time finding it is because it's a knockoff. Well, we shouldn't be publicizing that. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're impossible to find. <laughs> okay. Studio Sunday is fast approaching. Be sure to mark your calendars for October 7th through the 9th. And join us for a fun weekend. Yes, that's always fun. It's fun for everyone. We go live and just make all kinds of mistakes. <laughs> kind of like this. Yes. Uh, it's September, so we're busy planning 2023. And we have some amazing things in the works uh, that we can't wait to share with you. So it's going to be a fun year for sure. Yeah, yeah. 2023 is shaping up. It is. So that's it for me. I told you it was going to be short and sweet. That is fantastic. I know. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Uh, no, it's all about uh, Parker Girls number two this weekend. I just have tunnel vision. Yeah. So I have to ink uh, 35 pages today and 50, 50 pages tomorrow, and then I'll make my deadline. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we better get on the hot seat then. Okay, I'm on the hot seat already, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, the first question is from Sean Sandusky. And he says, I just want to know how Terry Moore started his career with such a masterpiece as SIP. And he went on to have, say a few other things, but I pulled this out there. How, I think people think this was your first foray and you just jumped in and you just got a winner. Yeah. But it was really years of thought and, and uh, drawing and figuring things out as you went along and disappointment and... Yeah, the comic is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, underneath that first issue is years of drawing those characters in one form or another in various styles of comic strips and everything else. Uh, I had the idea for quite a long time. And um, it, it was just one of those things that kind of, I hate to keep saying organic, but it did just kind of grow in a natural way towards uh, that didn't work, that didn't work, and then I thought, well, I need a comic book style so that I can let them finish their conversations. I'm not always working in a tight comic strip or something. And when I got to comic book style, it worked. Um, they had a chance to have their conversations that meant a little more than short quips in a comic strip. Um, it just kind of worked. So it was probably five or six years of trying to figure it out what what worked best for you and what worked best for the story mm -hmm. um, before you actually put it pen to paper to make a comic book. Yeah, and a, a couple of things helped that influenced me um, apart from cartooning. One of them was that I really loved to read. So I liked writing these longer dialogues, these uh, conversations that would take five minutes. Um, and I was editing in television, so I was thinking in terms of scenes anyway when a scene starts, where's the dynamic moment, and then when does the scene end. So I put the, I brought those two things into the my work and it really helped me a lot tell a story. So, I don't know, it just kind of came together. You, and when you're doing it the right way, it just suddenly starts going. Some of the and obstacles. it fits the story. Yeah, you know when you're trying and it's something and it's just not working out, um, there's, there's, there's something wrong in there. When you kind of get the right combination, you get further down the road and you go, whoa, look at the progress I'm making. Let's go. It just kind of works. Okay, Sean, I hope that answered the question. And the next question is from uh, YouTube comments from last week. Okay. R. Patrick Riley asks, what's the hardness of the lead in that wonderful mechanical pencil? <laughs> this guy. 
Uh, I think it is a, uh, uh, let, me, let me see if I can read the writing on the lead. Oh, it's an HB. <laughs> I use either an HB or a 2B in this pencil. Um, and this is, of course, the pencil that uh, drew every issue. Um, it's a Faber-Castell 0.05 that Robin and I got at Sennelier's in Paris in 1996, our first trip. And I've, I've used it ever since then to draw the comics. It, what were you just using before that? Just whatever mechanical pencil or wooden pencil I could find. But when you use a wooden pencil, you get fatter lines and it changes the drawing style. Uh, this one, because because the panels are smaller, I'm not drawing sketches, impressive, you know, big styles. I'm drawing this. So I needed more detail and the O5 does that for me. Um, sometimes I even start sketches with this O5 and then I finish it out with wooden pencils, you know, fatter lead. But um, yeah, this guy's a workhorse. That's $16 I ever spent. I have this and the very first Ames lettering guide I ever bought. And this is like $4. So these two things have lasted me my entire career. I have a spare and I've never needed it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It is cool. I like it. Okay. Well, I hope that answered the burning questions this week. Uh, send me your questions or post them on YouTube and we'll get to them. So that's it. What are you drawing today? I'm drawing Parker Girls number two. So if you want to talk to me, you have to talk about Parker Girls number two. And um, I do have a panel right here that I need to make two changes on. <clears throat> One is dialogue and the other is art. Join me here and we'll do it together. I'll show you how to do it. In Parker Girls number two, Tambi comes to visit Kachu. And they're talking about uh, Francine and how protective she is of the family and all that. Um, and they're, ta they're talking about something that Tambi sees in Kachu Studio. And it's obviously something to do with Francine. They start talking about Francine and um, Kachu says, when Francine found out, she was mortified. I don't know if you've ever seen her mad, but, and Tambi interrupts and says, yeah, Hawaii. That time I came to get you for Russia. Oh yeah. So then you come to these panels here and they're going to be um, a flashback, two, two scene, two panel flashback. And the flashback goes to this issue of five years where uh, Tambi came to get uh, Kachu to take her off to Russia. Francine is so mad that Tambi's doing that, she slaps Tambi. Francine is so mad she slaps Tambi. So those two panels go right here in a flashback moment. Um, the reason why those are that size is because the art was drawn to the same size as this art for that. So I just printed out the panels for that scene and built these empty panels around it. And what I'll do is um, when I scan this, I'll grab the original TIFF in Photoshop and put them in the boxes. So it'll be nice and clean. But this is the real size of the real art, of course. And I was able to judge the panel size. Easy, huh? Okay, now what I have to fix, leave that there. What I have to fix is this. Um, I have Kachu finishing, a finishing that thought, saying, yeah, she's a force of nature when it comes to protecting the family. She didn't say it flip like that. She says it more flat. Um, but that doesn't finish the conversation about uh, this object that's in the room. And the object in the room, I'll tell you, is a statue of Francine, um, which is what Tambi is looking at right here. I don't want to show it to you. Right there. Tambi is looking at a statue of Francine. And Kachu is telling her where it's, it came from. It came from college, and Francine dated a sculptor. Um, this has kind of been a running joke in Strangers in Paradise, if you read the series. Uh, 
every time I had to make a solicitation in Diamond Catalog for the next books, um, if it was full of spoilers, I didn't want to, you know, spoil my issue with the real plot. So I would make up a story that was, there's a nude statue of Francine in college, and she's uh, discovers that her boyfriend has made it. So that was a red herring solicitation. Everybody knew that was code for, there's a big deal event coming up in that issue. Um, and of course, there never was an issue. There never was a story about the statue. <laughs> it, was a, it was a red herring. So we come into this, uh, Parker Girls number two, you walk into Kachu Studio, there's the statue. <laughs> so she's saying, okay, yeah, the same thing I said in the solicitations. Oh, yeah, she was dating a sculptor in college. He made that on his own and entered it in the school's art exhibit. On his own? Yeah, she didn't know. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen her mad, but oh, yeah, I saw her mad. And then they remember the scene in Hawaii. So here is what I need to change. Um, Kachu says, yeah, she's a force of nature when she's mad, when it comes to protecting the family. But it doesn't finish, the, and then they move on. It, this doesn't finish the statue story. <clears throat> and I can finish the entire statue story right here and be done with it. Or I can recap something we've already seen. Yeah, she's a force of nature. Yeah, we know that. The scene just showed us. So I really, this is redundant. I really don't need to say this. I do need to finish and close off the statue story. So I'm gonna change the line right here. Like how did that statue get in this studio today? Okay, we knew it started in college. Why is it here? I can, I can solve that problem right now. So what I'm gonna do is change the dialogue right here and then we never have to talk about the statue again. And here's how I do it. I just use these um, Avery labels. They're in, they're removable so that I could pick that up and change it, do it again, do a new one, take this off, whatever. This is the same thing I use to cover art if I drew something bad. Um, so, where's my pencil? There, okay. Um, Okay, so let's enter it in the school's art exhibit on his own. So what I need to say now is, um, so anyway, I I, I tracked him down, or I tracked down her old boyfriend. So anyway, I tracked him down. I tracked the guy. The guy sounds more like, you know, we don't care about him. It's just that dude. I tracked the guy down. And made him an offer he couldn't refuse. That way, you know, it could have been a very kachoo like meeting, very intimidating. And it just seems so kachoo for her to track down the statue for Francine and get it back into their house instead of out there in the world. So anyway, I tracked the guy down and made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Don't you think? No, Kachu wouldn't ask the question. So I tracked the guy down and made him an offer he couldn't refuse. I just need one short sentence to finish it. Home at last. That. 
And then I will do my lettering thing on the T-square and letter that out. I could actually even just letter it as it is because I can actually see through there and see the blue lines. And that's how come I got as close as I did on the lines. Um, one other thing I don't like here in the art is I got the arm wrong. That arm, I came way, I came too far out when the first ink line, and then I changed it to this ink line. And then this line was too far in. So I really got this arm all like, psh, like it was, you know, broken. So the real line for this arm is here and here. Just move it all left a little bit. Then it works. So that is going to be fixed with that. And I know it's my, uh, this is the white out brush, just I have the white tip on it. <laughs> so yeah, I will just simply do that and do that, that, and that arm would be fixed. And that's penciled and ready to be inked. And when I ink it, I will ink it with a Micron number three. I use uh, number threes for the lettering. And then I use number fives for the circle. And then I use number eights for the border lines up here. So three, five, eight. And then when I get into uh, the smaller details, like the eyes right there, that hadn't been erased yet. It's not that dirty. Those eyes are drawn, the inside of the eye is drawn with the 005. And the same with the little lines on the nose. People have asked me, why do you have always have a red nose on Kachu? Kachu. She has allergies. She sneezes a lot. <laughs> Her nose is always a little red. And I just, I just always thought that was a really cute look. Um, and then in the comic strips, that was kind of a play on the name. Uh, I just stuck because um, she's a force of nature. <laughs> they all are. All these women are very strong. Um, anyway, so that's. That's my first job, and then I gotta get back to, uh, I have to ink uh, a million pages today and then a million pages tomorrow, and then we'll be ready to turn in our comic. Uh, it's funny, when I'm making the comic, it feels like hundreds of pages, and then when I finally get the comic in my hand and read it, it feels like four pages. <laughs> How come it took so long to make all that? It's just a lot of, uh, you know, detail work, so, okay. That's it for me. Um, that's how I make changes and edit myself as I go. So I've wrapped up the dialogue. I don't, now you don't have to go away wondering, okay, how did that object get here in the studio? And then when we go to the next thing, um, they've changed topics and they never look back. This panel is pointing us towards the rest of the series. Um, the next page, things get totally changed. All right, uh, fun. I love making comics and I uh, uh, hope this helps uh, show how easy and fun it can be. Uh, you draw it, you get a better idea the next day, you change it and there you go. That's basically the process until somebody takes it out of your hands and prints it. <laughs> All right, see you later.